I want to start by just saying we, we're, we're talking about this topic in a context, and the context is the upcoming plenary session of the Central Committee of China, uh, the dates of which were just announced and will be in, from the 9th to the 12th of November if things go according to plan. Um, it is just my um, projection, and the, the, the airwaves are full of projections, that I think that this is going to create uh, some sense, again, of forward movement in China, certainly in the economic area, but it's going to have spillover effects over time, I believe, in the political area, too. And so just as Deng Xiaoping's 1992 trip to the south of China, I think, energized both U.S.-China relations and China, I think this is going to energize China in many different ways, not all fully predictable and not all necessarily in the direction that the Chinese government might, uh, but might hope, but I think in that very positive. So I think you know, we're going to look at the period of Hu Jintao as one of sort of consolidation or some might even say stagnation, uh, but I think we're in for a reinvigorated period in China that's going to move in many directions simultaneously, not all of which are fully predictable, but generally speaking, positive. I've been asked to talk about security perceptions in China, and I'll speak telegraphically a, a, a little more clearly than the facts probably warrant, and then we can take the rough edges off in the Q&A, and I'm sure my discussants, our discussants will as well. I really have three points to make about security um, perceptions, mutual security perceptions. I think the first thing to say is that security perceptions by both the Chinese and the Americans are complicated, uh, that we are each ambivalent about the other, but I think this is a very important point. There are also positive as well as negative dimensions to our mutual security perceptions. So I'll, I'll lay a little out about that in a minute. Second uh, major point I would make is that security in both of our countries is not seen simply as military security. It's uh, both of our countries and our peoples, our populations, have a more differentiated sense, a more comprehensive sense of what constitutes security to include such things as uh, global warming, uh, international health issues, and more particularly economic security, maintaining stability in the international uh, economic system. So I think we have a more differentiated notion of security than just uh, military. Uh, thirdly, I would say, in addition, I, I will quote a lot of what you might call public opinion data. What does the average, whatever that means, person think? But of course, in policy making, not everybody is equal in any given policy making, and there are subgroups in both of our societies that I would say have disproportionate influence. And of course, we want to know a little about what those groups think, whether or not those those thoughts are similar or different from what you might call a popular opinion. So what I want to do is just briefly uh, hit a little more detail on each of these uh, three aspects. I draw in this comment, uh, in this set of comments on a number of sources, but certainly the Chicago Council on Global Affairs does a periodic survey, which they did in 2012-13. They're the whole, and I invite you to go to the website for the Pew Global Attitudes Project. They did polls germane to China and other countries as well, comparative studies in both 2012 and 2013. And then I just got sent some data from the U.S.-China Business Council on business, U.S. business attitudes towards China, which I take to be important, and that was in 2013 this year. So my data come from there. If we want to talk in the break about more where I got it and what the all the ifs, ands, and buts that go behind every statistic, uh, I'll, I'll do my best to address those. So point one was that mutual security perceptions are complex and amb ambivalent in both country and that they're encouraging as well as uh, less encouraging aspects. Uh, so what data do I adduce to this, and how would I describe China's attitudes or Chinese attitudes and U.S.? The first thing, I had a conference back in Washington last uh, week uh, with the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, the topic of which was a new type of big power, major power uh, relationship. And what I was struck is every Chinese speech 
was really on message. I mean, they had a message. And they kept saying, you Americans ask us, what is the key? What, what do you really mean by this new major power relationship? And the answer was unfailing. What we mean is conflict is not inevitable. We want to avoid conflict. That's what this is all about. So let's talk about how to do it. So the, the, the key phrase going on in China and what at least everybody you interact with is talking about is how how we can avoid the sort of um, uh, determinism that says if you have a rising power and a hegemonic or a status quo power, they must come into conflict. The Chinese are very afraid of that, that kind of determinism. And I would say a thrust of their foreign policy is to try to avoid that. Uh, so a second just piece of data along the way of arguing that uh, sort of trying to paint what the Chinese view might be. There was a 2012 Pew poll, uh, and it, it asked, how do you see the relationship with the United States? And what is interesting is the adjectives and descriptors Chinese were willing to uh, use to describe the relationship with the United States. 39% of the sample, this is in 2012, the number dropped a little bit in 2013, described US-China relations as cooperative. That, that's more than Americans think the Congress is behaving well. Uh, in other words, about a third of Chinese are, are willing to describe the relationship as a cooperative. About 26% were willing to say uh, that it's hostile. So you have slightly more willing to say cooperative than hostile. Uh, almost 50%, 43% said the relationship between the United States and China is really quite favorable. Uh, and I guess what you might say is over the last three years, the numbers have dropped a little, but, but, but you're, you're into the range that I, I'm talking about. So Chinese are willing, at least if asked, to give an adjective to the relationship, describe it as uh, at least cooperative, uh, with certainly a significant number saying hostile, uh, almost half willing to say favorable. Uh, there were other polls uh, that asked other, uh, an interesting question, of Chinese, do you like American ideas of democracy? And I would have thought, just by the way the questions asked in a Chinese environment, you were probably going to get a pretty high percentage of no's. But whatever your expectations, over half were willing to say to a polling organization uh, outside of China that 52% were willing to say they liked American ideas about democracy. 29% said they did not. Uh, also, there, uh, I think to round out, you've got this sort of substratum of what I'd call at least uh, modestly favorable views. Of course, if you talk to Chinese, what do they think the core of American foreign policy is, you will find a lot of people saying it's containment or some version of that, seeing the United States quite fearful of China's rise and trying to take measures to at least uh, uh, slow it down, if not uh, prevent it in some uh, way. Another whole way of looking at Chinese perceptions is to ask, how do they look at other countries? And what is kind of interesting is whatever you think they think of the United States, they generally have uh, less favorable views of many other countries that are quite interesting. Uh, the Chinese have less favorable views of the EU. They have less favorable views of India. Uh, they have less favorable views of Iran. It's interesting to look down the list of who they don't look uh, favorably on, even to the degree that they may look favorably on the United States. Uh, and also, the Chinese are quite aware of how others in Asia are looking at them. And they understand, and the polls show, that others in Asia, such as Japan, South Korea, Australia, the Philippines, and Indonesia, all have highly suspicious views of, of China. So I think the Chinese understand the U.S. is far, far away. It's a kind of mixed bag. It lives in a tough neighborhood, and the U.S. is not the biggest problem that China has in foreign policy. It, it presents continual uh, problems, but nonetheless, uh, I think that's sort of the complex uh, matrix of Chinese views. If you look at the United States, uh, there's a lot of data, but the Chicago Council uh, reports China's emergence as a world power does not evoke a great sense of threat for Americans. And most of the data you go through, and I'll just sort of uh, uh, not provide more, but uh, the Americans are not most worried about China in a security sense, it seems to me. 
Uh, Sixty-six percent of Americans see China as a competitor, uh, and 16% as a partner, and only 15% as an enemy. So I think if you're trying to think of a, a framework for American thought towards China, it's probably competitor, competitor in the economic sense, uh, some conflicting security interests, but we also have many common uh, interests. Indeed, I think if you try to understand how Americans are looking at China's security sense, you need to go back to a National Intelligence Council report issued in 2008 called Global Trends 2025. And basically the U.S. intelligence community defined uh, the world the U.S. was going into as one of more powerful players, wealth and power moving to the east, meaning Asia, uh, and that the U.S. will be less dominant and face more nationalism both in China and elsewhere. In other words, I think Americans see their post-World War II role changing. China's emblematic of that, but it's bigger than China. So a, a worry there, but it's put more into the framework of competitor as opposed to enemy. Second point I wanted to make is, is security by elites and citizens in both countries are seen as consisting of much more than, uh, than military and are multifaceted. I think the most important point I would want to leave you with, and, and it was brought home to me by the uh, de defense uh, secretary called in Australia, he says, you know, the, ma the security map of China isn't a bunch of red arrows pointed in from China's periphery threatening China. The security map the Chinese have in their mind is a bunch of red arrows of domestic problems, destabilizing problems internal to China that threaten the regime. And I think bottom line, if you look at a lot of the polls that are coming out from the Pew studies and others, the Chinese are concerned about a lot of things, global uh, climate change, product quality, uh, instability uh, in China, and so forth. So I don't think Chinese see the United States as the principal security problem that we're relevant to a lot of the security problems, but we're not the totality uh, of them. Uh, also, I think it's very important to recognize, and I think the polls are showing after a period of great self-confidence, the Chinese once again have a more realistic view of their economic power in the world than I would say they had at the height right after the uh, fall of Lehman Brothers. Uh, it's, it's interesting to me that uh, right after the fall of Lehman Brothers, China, about 48% of Chinese thought they were the most powerful economy in the world. That number is down to 29%. So I think the Chinese have uh, come to a, a greater appreciation that the world is indeed multipolar and China is not uh, maybe as dominant, uh, seen as dominant by its own people today as it was just a few years ago. If you think about uh, Americans and how they look, uh, the Chicago Council says Americans are concerned about the impact that China's growth will have and has had on the American economy. But half say that China's economy grows, and as it does, the U.S. economy will have both positive and negative effects. So the, the American people are kind of looking at this growth of China and saying it's complicated. There are pluses, there are minuses. We're not going to like it all, but on the other hand, it has some positives for us as well. The third thing, and then I'll, I'll wind up uh, with respect to, to uh, my formal remarks, is point three. It's essential to look at the attitudes of see, uh, key demographic and uh, social groups. And it seems to me that you can look at a couple of groups uh, uh, demographically and uh, see some interesting patterns. If you look at uh, citizens, American or Chinese citizens grouped by demographic characteristics, you'll see that younger, more educated, more urban, higher income Chinese people favor, uh, have more favorable views of the United States than less educated, less rural, less uh, high income uh, kind of people, which to me suggests as China's building this middle class, on balance it's netting out to uh, at least the social basis of, if not always warm relations, at least productive and lukewarm uh, relations. So the demographic trend of development and modernization in China, I think, is pushing us in a, a on net, a positive uh, direction. Uh, also, uh, I would say, uh, 
uh, if you look at uh, the Pew polls in 2012 and 2013, you know, just one the age, age uh, influence is, is very interesting. In the U.S., 57% of people that are 18 to 29 have a favorable view of China. If you look at the people that are over 50, it's only about 27%. So I, I had actually kind of expected the opposite. But the, and the same pattern is reflected in China. The younger the people, basically the more positive the attitude towards uh, the United States. I'll conclude just by saying a couple of words about business community attitudes. There's a lot of talk that the business community is a little more jaded on China, is a, a little more negative, is not so willing to weigh into political arguments in Washington because they're somewhat alienated from some specific Chinese policies as well as the more general uh, um, um, development of uh, political developments recently in China. But if you look at the polls that the U.S.-China Business Council did, it's really quite startling how positive the business community is with, with their, uh, as measured by their own data. 88% of the American business, now these are the big multinationals, this isn't your mom and pop middle, middle and small businesses, but 88% of the reporting businesses were optimistic or somewhat optimistic about business uh, prospects in China. 46% of the firms said profits in 2013 were up 10% uh, plus. 61% of the firms said profits are better or the same than they were the pre preceding year. And 96% of the firms said China's in the top five of their global strategic priorities. So all I would say is whether you look at the emerging demographic character of our societies, you look at business groups, uh, you know, there's no reason for uh, what I would call excessive optimism, but by the same token, I think there's no particular reason to be uh, particularly pessimistic. In other words, I think the people in both of our societies see they have bigger security problems and should have bigger security problems that they face than with each other. In other words, the job is maybe we're not going to have great relations, but we don't have to have highly antagonistic relations. And, you know, in the end, I think that isn't a bad basis for a productive relationship. Thank you very much.